Hey everyone, Simon here from Top Tennis Training and in this video I'm going to show you some drills that you can be using on your ball machine to have a really good workout and improve your tennis game. In this drill I'm working on my forehand and that recovery. So what I'm going to do is have my marker just off center, I'm going to be hitting forehands cross court and I'm going to be recovering behind that marker. I'm going to aim the machine so that it's going quite wide in the singles court it doesn't have to be all the way in the singles court or in the tram lines, but I want to have a couple of steps to move to and from the ball. My main focus here is hitting that shot and recovering back using a crossover and a side shuffle. I'm split stepping when the ball's just about to fire out. I know the tempo and then I'm going out to the ball as quickly as I can, setting up to hit that shot and then recovery. Now when you're doing a drill like this where there is a lot of movement, it's very hard to maintain high intensity for more than 10 or 12 balls. So what I'm going to do is focus on 10 shots, having that high intensity, moving out wide, hitting the shot and recovering. In this drill, I'm now doing the same on the backhand side. So I'm hitting a wide backhand and recovering off center. Once again, my focus is early preparation, getting to the ball as quickly as I can, hitting that shot and then recovering using the crossover or the side shuffle. <laughs> In this drill, I'm focusing on my slice backhand. So what I'm gonna do is have the ball a little bit wider and then I'm gonna have a longer recovery. So the tempo has to change, I'm reducing the tempo. What I'm focusing on here is as soon as I see the ball is coming out of the machine, I'm getting that unit turn with the upper body. I'm getting behind the bounce hopefully, I'm slicing and then I'm getting back as quickly as I can. Those first initial push off steps from that wide ball are crucial in helping you get back into a good position. In this drill, I'm working on my low forehand volley. So the ball machine is a great time to work on the different heights and the different types of balls you're gonna receive when you're at the net. And one of the most important balls to master is picking up low volleys. Because if you are someone who comes into net a lot, you will be picking up low balls against stronger players. Those stronger players will try to pass you with those one-two combinations. One ball into the feet where you have to volley up and then pass you on the next shot. So it's important that you master picking up these low volleys and hitting a good volley off of these. So my focus on this will be getting down low, using my legs to lunge into the low volley, 
So I'm not bending with my back and I'm not definitely not staying up straight like so. What I want to feel is that I'm getting down, I'm lunging into this left leg now and I'm under the ball. Once I hit the ball, I'm opening the string slightly to put that backspin on the ball and I want to keep the ball as low as possible so that it doesn't bounce high for my opponent to hit the next shot. When you do have a low ball, you're mainly going to go down the line, so I'm working on that down the line on the low forehand volley. In this drill, I'm working now on that mid-range forehand volley. Once again, my focus is on keeping the ball as low as possible. Here I can start changing directions. I can go down the line or cross court. Again, you want to focus on keeping that ball low by producing that underspin so you're opening the strings as you make contact. You're not doing this. You're coming under the ball to produce that slice and hopefully keep the ball bouncing nice and low, extra hard for your opponent to pass you on that next shot. In this drill, I'm now working on the high forehand volley. So we've worked on the low, we've worked on the medium range. Now the high volley, I can start flattening out the shot. I don't have to put this under spin, so I can really go through the ball with a more flatter racket face. This time I can go down the line, cross court, or I can use a short angle. Once again, with all of these drills, my focus is using the legs. So I'm getting to the ball, I'm hitting, and then I'll have a small recovery. I'm timing the split step to hopefully feel that I'm split stepping, and I'm imagining that I'm split stepping when the opponent is making contact and the ball's coming out of the machine. Instead of doing one split step, I can do multiple split steps. So instead of just doing one, I can have two or three small ones, then go. Two or three small ones, and then go. I'm working on that fast footwork at a net because that's what I need when I'm playing a match. In this drill, I'm now working on that low backhand volley. So we've done the low forehand volley. Now it's all about getting down with the right leg if you're a right-handed player, making sure you really get down, bending this front knee and getting under the ball once again, opening the strings to impart that uh, slice onto the ball. In this drill, I'm now working on that medium range backhand volley. So I'm hitting it mainly down the line, but I can start to go cross court as well. What I want to feel is that I'm imparting that slice so that the ball stays low. Everything comes back to the footwork. Once again, I'm focusing on loading up on this left leg, my outside leg, and then stepping through as I make contact.
And now on the high back and volley, we're going to be working on going down the line, cross court, and that short angle. What I want to focus on here is really loading up on this left leg. I'm loading up, and as I make contact, I'm going through with that lunging uh, jump onto the right leg. So it's always that left, right. So left, right. And again, recovering and getting ready for the next ball. Now a very common question that we get asked is what type of ball machine is the best to have a really good session? And the answer is any type of machine that will allow you to do the basics in training. Now some machines will give you random feeds so you don't know where the ball is coming. Some will give you actual targets on the, on the court so you'll know that it's coming short to your forehand, deep to your forehand. So some of the programs available are incredible. You can have a really good session using those high-end ball machines. However, you could still have a really great session, even if you have the most basic one, one that just fires in one direction with no spin, and you know that it's coming there time and time again. You can still work on the fundamentals, and you can still have a great workout using those cheaper versions. Now, there are two common errors that players make when they're working out on the ball machine. The first one is because they know where the ball is going, unless they have it on random. They know that the ball is coming to their forehand, for instance they stop using their feet. So their footwork really becomes sloppy and lazy. And what happens is they start just arming the ball and just working on their swing. So there's no movement to and from the ball. There's no split step. They may be getting their swing better, but their footwork is getting worse and they're getting lazier using the correct steps. So their footwork suffers and actually working out in that method will make you a worse tennis player because you're becoming lazy and you're getting into a habit of not moving your feet. Think about the tennis players that we watch on TV, players like Federer, Djokovic, Nadal, uh, Andy Murray, all these players who have really good footwork. When you watch them, even in training, they're still doing at least the minimum, the split step and a few steps to and from the ball. There's never a time where you'll see them just doing this up and down the middle without using their footwork to at least a 50% level. And on the ball machine, you should be using your footwork. You should be using correct uh, footwork patterns all the time. This doesn't mean that you have to have full intensity on every single shot, but you want to have at least one step, two steps to the ball, a small recovery step, and a split step. So you're getting into those good habits even when you're training on the machine. The second thing is because players know which side it's coming to, they'll get lazy with their preparation. Now, if I know that the ball's coming to my forehand, I can wait for the ball to come almost halfway towards me from the other side and then I'll start the preparation. Now this will get you into a bad habit of preparing late. So what you want to focus on when you're working on the machine is two things. Having good footwork all the time. And this means even if you know the ball's coming to the same spot time and time again, instead of being this and doing this lazy sloppy footwork, have the split step, have one step to the ball, hit the shot and then even this tiny recovery step. So you're having two or three steps on every single shot, even if the ball's coming to the same spot. What you might have to do is reduce the tempo. So instead of having the ball coming bam, 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 where you won't have time to do those steps, you have the ball coming a little bit slower, which will allow you the time to go hit one recovery step, split step, and move out again. The second thing you want to focus on is having early racket preparation. Even if I know the ball's coming to my forehand time and time again, what I want to do is make sure that as soon as the ball comes out of the machine, as soon as it leaves that machine, my first step is there. I'm turning, I'm coiling the upper body, and I'm starting that early preparation. This will reinforce what I want to be doing when I'm rallying with somebody or when I'm playing a match. What I don't want to be doing if I'm playing a point with somebody is waiting for the ball to come to my side, bounce, and then prepare. I want to be in that early preparation. Is it a forehand? Yes, I'm preparing. Is it a backhand? Yes, I'm preparing. So quick early preparation using at least 50 to 60% of your maximum footwork potential. So there you have it guys, some of the basic fundamentals that you can work on using a ball machine.
Now if you do this kind of workout a couple of times a week, you'll see a big difference in your tennis game, especially your movement. This will really help you reinforce using the correct uh, footwork patterns, that split step, that first push off to the ball, and then the recovery steps. Now if you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you turn on that notification bell so you get our latest videos as soon as we release them. Signing off, Simon from TTT, all the best and see you soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs>